Hey there, it's the Thursday edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. We'll get to our current weather in just a second, but first you may or may not have seen uh, in the news reports, on the internet, uh, Twitter, Facebook, etc., the National Weather Service, uh, part of the National Oceanographic Atmospheric Administration, easy for me to say when I'm tired, uh, issued their winter uh, forecast. Got a few things to say about this. All right, first of all, uh, it's not really a forecast. What they put out are, it's a probability scheme. You know, you, you eyeball this, and you might uh, be it might be easy uh, to, to draw the conclusion that, oh, it's going to be a colder than average winter here. It's going to be a warmer than average winter here, and it's going to be an average winter all in this real estate through here. No, that's not what this map means at all. Again, it's a probability sc scheme, and the words are important. The National Weather Service puts out this forecast with equal chances of cold, warm, and average. So in other words, if you look at this map and interpret it correctly here in Youngstown, NOAA, or, the, or you know, the, the, the head of the National Weather Service, uh, is predicting a 33% chance that it's going to be a normal winter, a 33% chance it's going to be a warmer than average winter, and a 33% chance it's going to be a colder than average winter. And then you look down here, and, uh, you know, starting in parts of the Deep South, there's a somewhat greater than 33% chance that it'll be colder than average, et cetera, et cetera. This, in my opinion, and in the opinion of most meteorologists, I would say, I, I would hazard a guess anyway, uh, is a really outdated way of putting out a forecast. Uh, it's, uh, it, it doesn't really communicate to the public much of anything, really. The second thing I have to say about this is that it's possibly a pretty bad forecast. This map is very reliant upon a, an El Nino forming, which I do think will happen, but it's very, very standard issue El Nino weather. In a typical El Nino, this is the kind of map you see in the winter. It's usually chilly in the south, it's usually warm in parts of the west, and it can be near or even above average in parts of the northeast. The problem is this is not going to be a typical El Nino winter at all. It's going to be far from normal. The center of the warm water out across the Pacific is not going to be in the usual place in a typical El Nino. It is a weak El Nino. It's not a moderate or strong El Nino. This map looks to me like a little more of a, a, a medium to strong type of El Nino map. And, and also, there are other factors in, that go into a winter forecast. What are the water temperatures uh, in the northern Pacific? What are the water temperatures in the Atlantic Ocean? Uh, what do things look like way out over the Indian Ocean? Because that can have an influence on the overall progression of things. How's the snow cover in and around the Arctic Circle, and especially over in Siberia, over in Russia? These are things that uh, need to be looked at when creating a winter forecast. And, and this map would lead you to believe they didn't pay much attention to some of those other things and put out a very standard issue El Nino forecast. Uh, our forecast here at WFMJ will be out in a few weeks. We're going to do it uh, on TV, on the Internet. We'll make a big deal out of it, but it's going to be in, in November. Uh, it's a little too early for us to... Uh, to responsibly put out a, a forecast for the winter. It's middle of October, after all. As far as the uh, NOAA precipitation outlook, again, this is very, very standard issue El Nino, with a wetter-than-average look in the south and parts of the east coast. At least the odds are better of a, of a uh, wetter-than-average period down in the south and the east coast, and the odds, according to NOAA, favor a drier-than-average winter around the Great Lakes and up into the northwest. Again, very classic El Nino. Yeah, the problem is this probably won't be a classic El Nino winter. So stay tuned for our forecast. We'll have it out in a few weeks. All right, off my soapbox and on to the weather. Hey, look at this. We have some thunder and lightning going on up in Trumbull County with these showers. Uh, this is, uh, as I'm recording this, around 2 o'clock around Champion and Cortland. Now, unfortunately, these videos take a little time to get online. So as most of you are watching this, this will not be what the radar looks like when you're watching it. But about 2 o'clock, that's what it looked like, with some lightning in Trumbull County. And showers are continuing to pivot south and east. We're about to head into our most active part of the day, mid to late afternoon. I wouldn't be shocked if there was a little soft hail in some of these harder showers that have the lightning. So that's something to, to watch out for. And we're underneath this big, cold, swirling area of low pressure in the upper levels of the atmosphere. Real classic-looking autumn map here. Our steady rain that we had a while back uh, has pushed all the way to the east coast right now. All right, I want to take you through the next uh, couple of days, show you what's going on here, and help you plan things out. We'll start out with this evening, and we're going to show you, as usual, and we have precipitation to show you, uh, the high-resolution rapid refresh model, our highest-resolution short-term model. Here's the simulated radar. 
it has kind of the right idea here early to mid-afternoon with a scattering of showers from about Cleveland to Youngstown. Skipping ahead to 4 o'clock then, everything's continuing to sink south and east. And then by 6 o'clock, it's going to be wet in parts of the area. That's, you know, that's a, a good bet. Uh, again, lightning and thunder, something I can't rule out through the rest of the daylight hours. After sunset this evening, here's 8 o'clock. See some scattered showers around, and I'll skip ahead to the middle of the night tonight. This is just after midnight, 1 a.m., and uh, things are quieting down at that point. Once we lose the showers later on tonight, I suspect we lose them until late Friday night heading into Saturday. Skipping ahead to Friday, I think Friday is going to start out cloudy. No rain likely, but I think there'll be a deck of clouds in this zone through here through at least morning, if not the first part of the afternoon. Deeper into the afternoon, I think we've got a better chance of seeing some sun. The NAM model wants to spin up a little bit of green here. I don't buy that. Uh, I don't think there'll be any showers around tomorrow. Uh, and I do think you'll see a better chance of seeing some sun later on in the afternoon. And then after sunset, and especially after Friday night football, there's going to be some showers that rotate back in. And this is with our next cold front that's coming our way for the start of the weekend. And this is a pretty good front, sparking some showers late Friday night heading into Saturday. Saturday's going to be a raw day. It's going to be probably no higher than 50 or so, and it could even be in the 40s if uh, you know the showers move in and are consistent enough in the morning hours. Showers will be around into Saturday night. You know, I wouldn't be shocked Saturday night if especially on the hilltops up in, oh, Ashtabula County, heading over towards Erie, PA, and maybe as far south as Interstate 80 in Mercer County. I wouldn't be shocked if there was a snowflake or two seen uh, with some of these leftover showers as the atmosphere continues to cool Saturday night. Then I think Sunday's a better day. It's going to be chilly. You know, we're probably in the 40s on Sunday, despite some sun working in for the afternoon. Skipping ahead to next week then, uh, Monday, another front moves in with a couple of showers around Monday and the parts of Tuesday. That reinforces the chill for a couple of days. Then I think there's some hope we'll break out of the chilly pattern. Let's look at the longer range here. I'll skip ahead to next week. Here's Monday. Notice the warmth really building out across Canada, the western U.S., while a chilly air mass is all over the east on Monday of next week. We'll go ahead to the middle of next week then. Here's Tuesday, still below average here. Here's Wednesday. Notice the warm air is on the move across Canada. But, you know, I'll tell you, notice the intensity of the warm air definitely peters out later in the week. So as this air mass moves east, the temperature anomalies are not going to be nearly as impressive as, as when the air mass was over uh, western and central Canada. But nonetheless, for us, I do think that the tail end of next week will be better than the first half of the week. In terms of comfort levels, it's going to be pretty chilly early next week. And a quick look at the longer range then, all the way into next weekend. Nothing really stands out here. Odds favor warmer than average temperatures across the plains, and and maybe you know we have a kind of an average mid to late October weekend next weekend. As always, take any long range forecast with a grain of salt, including the winter forecast. We have hopes that ours will wor will work out better than Noah's. Uh, but uh, you know these long range forecasts, whether they be 14 days out or a season out. Always subject to needing to be updated, always subject to changes. The atmosphere is incredibly complex and dynamic and as arrogant as we can be sometimes about predicting the weather and we get a lot of things right. The atmosphere has a tendency to be humbling and every now and then makes us look kind of silly. As every joke about every weather man or weather female uh, you've ever heard will attest to. All right, that's today's Weather for Weather Geeks. I'll see you on Friday. Have a great rest of your Thursday.